Eckler. Tom Eckler. <laughs> that one. <laughs> this this is the question that I wanted to ask, and this is a piss poor map for what we're trying to accomplish. But um, and you you're not going to see you're not going to see a clear run of the uh, like this is the Yalu. Yeah, yeah. Okay, road. you're down here around the chosen. Right. When you when you yourself, when you tell me the word, the name chosen, and then you're at the frozen chosen. Anyway. When you talk to me and we have a conversation, just in conversation, when you say the word chosen, right. the, the actual word of it, and this is what I've been, I guess, struggling with and didn't realize it. This guy, when he says chosen, he thinks Hagaru and the south tip of the peninsula. Main what? He's talking about, when you when he says the word chosen, he's talking about Hagaru and the south tip of the, the reservoir. Right. If you talk to Marine, he's talking about the West Point side or Hagaru and New Dom's right. area. Right. When you talk about Hagaru, right. you're talking about northeast. Right, I'm, that's what I'm Drift. talking about. Okay, just wanted to be clear on that. Yeah. Right. Takes all the debate out of my yeah. mind. You know, uh... They just come up with nicknames of Frozen Chosen, you know. Yeah, and but and some people think about the whole area and everything yeah. that's involved, and some people think about specifics, like, you know, the East Hill or Hill 1221. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm talking about the area that we were in, you know. But it probably pertains to the Frozen Chosen all over there. Everybody, yeah. The, if you're right. on Hellfire Valley or Oro right, or right. Coto Ree, yeah, that's still chosen to you, right. right. Just making sure we're clear. Uh, so you can't really identify when they pulled your infantry to platoon and your infantry platoon, right? No, I'm not really, Bobby. See? Or rifleman platoon. Right. Okay, yeah. You're part of the 31st Infantry, but you're a rifle platoon. Right. I thought maybe... You had the period of crisis. You know, this is the 25 August of 4 September 1950. You know, that's what the date on this thing is. Yeah, that particular one. I'm going to have the other ones that are more up there. Right. We haven't got into the Chapter 3. Right. In the Chapter 3 will have the, ma the maps that uh, apply to that. This is what happened to you at sea. Right. This is kind of fun. I'm going to assume you at Sasebo, Japan, because right. you're the closest in and the easiest out. You could have been, yeah. You could have been in Yokohama. You could have been in Kobe. In him, right. You weren't in Tokyo. This uh, I know. No, I know. So Walker's 8th That's Army. Pusan, right. Yeah, parts of Walker's 8th Army are pulled out of Pusan, and you come out of one of these three locations, probably right. Sasebo. And you see these waypoints? Right. Waypoint, Iowa, Waypoint, Arkansas, uh, right? That's when your armada meets up with other parts of the armada, and yeah. then they make their way north. Uh, right. Now, bombing starts here on the 13th. In John, yeah. Yeah, bombing starts here on the 13th. Right. But here's a fun fact. On August 4th to September 15th, a hurricane comes sweeping through here and curves back out to sea and crosses mm. the island again. Right. When this one dissipates on the on the fifteenth, another one has or August fourth, another one has formed up and is coming the same path, and it's running right at you right here. Right, yeah, uh, yeah. Which is why your your waterways were so damn rough. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you literally, they literally took the armada between two hurricanes or typhoons, right. however you want to call it. Uh, see, the John. See, I am read this. You know that's. Good day. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna enjoy this. I hope so. Enjoy. Yeah, two hundred and sixty ships. Yeah, that's a big dance. With the intention of having them hit the beach at the same time. Time is crucial, right? Right. Now this guy, he hits the beach on the east side, and he writes about hitting it on the east side. He was down below the Marines. Right. You all went in at Ewan. The Marines went in north, south of that, about 100 miles, and I think he just a little south of that with some rock Marines. Right. He talks about when he's getting off this boat, 
that the waves are jumping so bad. He said, you're in the net one minute, and oh, you're yeah. wedge drag, and then the waves come up, or the boats come up and down, so then That's the net's right. all up in your legs and shit. Well, no wonder. You're, you're right in hurricanes. Yeah. That's why the That's waves right. are so bad. <laughs> well, MacArthur took a big chance on an invasion. Right. They say it couldn't be done. Yeah. See. Now, at Inchon, the, the two tides, we talked about that earlier. There are 33 foot tides over on the Inchon side of the right. it's crazy. Well, that's, that's why they said, it, you know, that the, that the uh, beachhead or the landing couldn't be done because of the tide and every, all the odds was against it was to end it up being successful yeah. when it shouldn't have been. When it should have been. You know, odds was against it. At every angle. Yeah, all, every, all had weather, <laughs> waves, tide, everything. Well, I thought it was interesting when you when you read the reports that they were bombing and straight yeah, I'm gonna running. Read, I'm going to read all of that. They were straight from the east side of that and trying right. to draw, make the North Koreans think that you all were actually coming from the east when you were coming from the west. Right. And as soon as they moved everybody to the west, they started landing them on the east and really had like a double pincer move to cut off supply lines and stuff. I mean, it was right. it was really a quick hook and ladder that would have just shut everything down. Uh, had they decided not to cross the 38th. Right. This guy makes the same point yeah. about crossing the 38th. He talks about the nuclear issue like you have. Uh, shit, I, I read his book and I think I'm reading your book. Yeah, I am, yeah. <laughs> I am even, uh, I've never seen that. I'm going to read it. Yeah, you're, I'm going to read that first, then I'll go to that. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't need this immediately. No, uh, you, if you need it, you take it and I'll get it later because i got to read this. Okay, I'll make that deal. You may take that, leave that if you can. Okay. Let me read that the next time I'll read the book. How's that? Okay, I'll make so that you deal. You probably need the book. Yeah, I kind of would because he yeah, makes some good comments. Fit in names and stuff, you know. You know what a honcho is? You know, you ever remember them using the term honcho when you were there? Oh, yeah. What's that mean to you? It means a buddy. Okay. Well, they, they called the Koreans honchos because yeah. they didn't know what to call them. <laughs> that Monday guy that you just mentioned, yeah. if I find him on this list, I don't know if I will. I'm going to look at it. There's another there's another version of this list where I can see it in color. It's easier for me to read. I'm going to compare yeah. Monday to this, and he's on this list, man. Right. We got it locked out just like we needed to. Right. Don't, don't feel like you got to rush through that. That will be in the file. That's Survivors and KIAs. You'll notice right. Colonel McLean's on that list. But there's a lot of 31st, too. But uh, that other list of names, the, the six, eight hundred names I gave you, it would probably help if you kept that with that. Right. That way you have one big file folder for the whole dance. Okay, marching out, you all stop at Kodo, a little town called Kodo, and they have uh, guards, people running, you know, 24 hour sentries around it. You're getting a lot of uh, Australian and uh, Marine airplanes mm -hmm. covering the area. In fact, one of them actually crashes into the hillside on the march back. You get back to E to Pusan, we're just going to kind of brush through that. When you get back to Pusan, we know there's only 70 left. Did they take E Company and disband it or did they replenish it? They, the e, the e Company was uh, stayed intact and they had replacements, fellows coming in. Okay. Replacements. Right. And whoever you were in. never was disbanded while I was with it. Right. Okay. It still exists today. I would think it would. I would think it would. I just want to be sure. Um, with Colonel McCaffrey, the story on that, we talked about that over the phone a couple of days ago. When I asked you about that, you gave me a quick run through. Right. 
I've already made the mistake of thinking it was Barry McAfee, but I think that's like his son or something. You're talking about William McAfee. General. I think so, yeah. Yeah. So he pins a silver star on you. Are you literally in the field in a foxhole that day? I mean, yeah, what happened is we went on a recon, a 